Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel just revealed what Punisher is doing during Daredevil Born Again Season 1 and what's going on with Foggy Nelson and Karen Page coming back. So we'll break it all down. I know a lot of you have been asking what's going on with them coming back because there's been reports about them not being in Season 1. Don't worry, I'll explain everything. Of course, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes, so if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. There's 18 episodes in Season 1, even though they're breaking it in half. They should all air next year, even though there have been some delays recently. There's also that movie ticket giveaway we're in the middle of, so I'll name a winner during this video too. But a while ago, it was revealed, to our surprise, that John Bernthal would also be coming back as the Punisher during Daredevil Born Again. Maybe not surprised. I think we all wanted him to come back, but it was just eventually confirmed a little while ago. Now we've learned that his role will be way bigger than your typical one-off cameo scene, like blink and you'll miss it kind of cameo. His story will be a significant part of the plot with what Daredevil himself and Kingpin are doing during the series. Typically, you think of the show just being about Daredevil and Kingpin because they always attend Comic-Con panels together. They do a lot of conventions together, so it's typically just the two of them. But think of Punisher during season one as being like one of the third main characters. When the series is supposed to pick up, a little time has gone by since the events of Secret Invasion, President Ritson declared war on the scrolls. During the finale, we saw people running around in mobs all over the streets just killing everybody in sight on the suspicion that they might be scrolls. And they were like Punisher level vigilantes, just like regular dudes running around in mobs trying to kill everybody that they thought might be a scroll, killing a bunch of innocent people. So the idea is this chaos all over the world, everybody's clamoring for security, for safety. And you have a bunch of just regular dudes all over the planet starting to think of themselves as the Punisher. Like, that's the vibe. In response to that, law enforcement agencies have to act in kind, down to the regular police officers on the street, getting really violent, mostly because they're dealing with mobs of regular people running around shooting everything that moves. But as the broader sense of fear, dread starts setting in with the population around the world, people start getting paranoid, protection and security become their most important concerns, and even though this is happening all over the world, Daredevil Born Again mostly localized to the New York City area. Local police start getting more and more aggressive and violent in their tactics. It becomes this big commentary for police brutality, but it's all because of what happened with President Ritson and the Scrolls. Some of the police start to take example from the Punisher, who is canon to the MCU again now. I, people were wondering what the canon was going to be, like what is canon from the Marvel Netflix shows from the Punisher series from Daredevil Born Again, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, who'd be coming back. The vast majority of what Punisher and Daredevil did during their Netflix series, like Daredevil and the Punisher series, are mostly canon. Not like 100%, but mostly canon. Sort of like a piecemeal thing, like once Jessica Jones comes back, most of her stuff will become canon again too, but not until she comes back. So everyone in the universe knows the Punisher exists. The police remember him from the events of the Punisher series. They start to adopt his more hardcore tactics because of all these vigilantes running around in the streets. And a bunch of corrupt police officers start using his Punisher symbol to do a bunch of shady stuff, which is a big commentary on police brutality. But in the context of the MCU, it's a bunch of corrupt cops using his symbol, not all the police. So apparently at the beginning of the series, when things pick up, Punisher spends the early part of that, not the whole season, but at least when it picks up, going after these corrupt cops that are using his Punisher symbol to do whatever they want, like all the shady stuff that they can get their hands on. Normally, Punisher would love to see law enforcement take a tougher stance on crime, but I think the idea is that the dirty cops are either killing innocent people or they're just being worse than actual criminals or committing a lot of crimes themselves. Pretty dark day when the Punisher feels like you've crossed the line and you're dragging his good name through the mud. There was something similar that happened in real life at Marvel Comics, not Marvel Studios, like not the movie stuff, but on the comic book side, they had to change Punisher symbol for a while just because there were a bunch of real life police officers using it and they thought it was really distasteful. So it turned into this whole big thing a couple of years ago. So if you wonder in the comics why Punisher hasn't been using his traditional Punisher symbol, that's why. While he's busy dealing with that during the episodes, Kingpin has been running for mayor of New York City using an anti-vigilante campaign, which is right out of the comics. Daredevil and Punisher are both vigilantes, so he essentially declares war on them. People like them. And even though I never thought of Spider-Man as a vigilante, Kingpin, the cops, treat him like one. So his relationship, same as Daredevil and Punisher's, is the same with the police. Like, the good cops appreciate their help, but because the law treats what they're doing as kind of illegal, even though they're helping people, technically the police have to try and arrest them every chance they get. So like there are good cops on the force that are trying to help them, work with them, or at least allow them to do what they do. A lot of people wondering what's going on with Spider-Man during the events of Daredevil Born Again. A little time has gone by since the end of Spider-Man No Way Home. There was the funny scene of Matt with Happy Hogan, him trying to defend him. 
Matt Murdock has still been doing stuff like that. Spider-Man has still been busy trying to finish his GED and just act like friendly neighborhood Spider-Man in the comics. They didn't say exactly what month Daredevil Born Again takes place, but like a little bit of time has gone by. I don't think that Spider-Man has started his freshman year in college yet. Most of Tom Holland's focus in real life in the MCU is just on Spider-Man 4, so I don't expect him to cross over into Daredevil Season 1, but they'll probably reference Spider-Man or have a J. Jonas Jameson cameo scene with him yelling about Spider-Man, Daredevil, Punisher, scrolls, all kinds of vigilantes. It feels like a very J. Jonah Jameson thing for him to do. Kevin Feige did confirm there would be some crossover between Daredevil and Spider-Man during Spider-Man 4, but I think he was mostly talking about Daredevil and maybe Kingpin 2 appearing in the movie, not Spider-Man appearing on the series. Marvel and Sony are really picky about Tom Holland's Spider-Man appearing on TV stuff. Like even during the What If series, most of the movie actors came back as their characters except for Tom Holland's Spider-Man. He was one of the few that did not do that. Mostly because they don't want him being in like a billion different things, which is why I think that Sony is trying to introduce their own version of Spider-Man or like bring Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire back to be in some of their Spider-Man spin-off movies so that Tom Holland doesn't have to be in like every single one. It is definitely not Morbin time or Craven time for Tom Holland Spider-Man yet. All this stuff during Daredevil Born Again is meant to be part of the Dark Reign era of Marvel Phase 5 that'll culminate during Captain America 4 Brave New World when Thunderbolt Ross becomes the president of the United States. He and Kingpin essentially rule their territory, so to speak, with iron fists to make as many defenders puns as possible. The difference is that Kingpin is just mostly localized to the New York City area like mayor of New York City versus being the president of the United States. While he's busy running for mayor, Daredevil is not working at Nelson, Murdoch, and Page anymore when the series begins. Foggy Nelson and Karen Page still can into the MCU in the series, but like during She-Hulk, he was at a different law firm when he was visiting Los Angeles to get those new suits. That'll continue at the beginning of Daredevil Born Again, but they will explain why Foggy and Karen aren't around at the beginning. Their absence is supposed to be a big plot point, meaning that they will come back eventually. A lot of people worry that they would just completely get rid of those characters, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. A little while ago, Charlie Cox even spoke about Karen Page, saying that she was basically always going to be best girl, even if they didn't start Daredevil Born Again with them being together. I think this, if you're a true Daredevil fan, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but I think that I feel like there's probably no escaping that there, there's only one Karen Page. You know what I mean? In, and that, that is his... That's his... his forever after kind of one. Supposedly they'll explain why all three of them, Matt Foggy and Karen, haven't been working together in present day, but because they're breaking the season in half, my assumption is that Foggy and Karen will have some kind of flashback in the first half of the episodes, and maybe in the second half or during season two, they'll come back for real in a bigger way. They haven't said what season two is going to be about, only that we know that they will do a season two at some point. Hopefully there isn't a huge break. Like I said, season one, 18 episodes, there's going to be a break in the middle. Typical season of television. They were originally supposed to start airing episodes spring 2024, but with the recent delays because of the strikes, I think they'll probably try to premiere it in the summer, meaning they might air the second half at the end of next year. One of the other big changes is that Daredevil Board Again was like one of the first series that Kevin Foggy was able to address a lot of people's complaints about these six episode Marvel events, quote unquote. They're trying to make it their new major series with way more effort going into it. That's why they greenlit it for 18 episodes in season one instead of the typical six or nine episodes. They knew it was going to be a much bigger deal for them. I think the extra episode order was also part of Kevin Feige's response to the complaints over the short six episode runs that weren't really designed to be TV shows. Marvel always thought of them as more like movie scripts that never actually made it into movies. Like a bunch of extra scripts they had just lying around on the shelf like, hey, let's just air this in six different episodes. We'll just chop it up instead of turning it into actual television episodes. That's one of the reasons why a lot of the pacing on some of these smaller Marvel shows feels really weird because they were never designed to be TV shows. Daredevil Born Again, on the other hand, was always designed from the ground up to be a traditional TV show, so I think it will just flow a lot better. I think it will just feel a lot better. Let me know in the comments which other characters do you want to see cross over onto Daredevil Born Again. In related news, big reminder, Ahsoka episodes start next week. Of course, I'll be doing videos for everything. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of those. Congratulations, Mike B. 4226 You're the giveaway winner from my Blue Beetle video. Please email me on the About page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Click here for that new Thunderbolts Sentry teaser, and click here for my Doctor Strange 3 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.